author and intimacy expert Laura M. Brotherson, host of the Marital Intimacy Show, educates and inspires women to create a mutually fulfilling, intimate, and passionate marital relationship, emotionally, spiritually, and sexually. Hi there. Welcome to the Marital Intimacy Show. My name is Laura Brotherson. Thanks for tuning in today. Well, today the topic isn't quite so pleasant for me and probably for most of us, but I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Tiger Woods and the recent revelations of his infidelity. Uh, so this is actually episode number 11, and the, ti the title is Tiger Woods, Marriage and Infidelity. Now, I realize that there are a lot of men and women who do not get caught up in extramarital infidelity. You know, media, of course, has a way of uh, picking up on the sensational, of course, but it's kind of something we can't really ignore. And with the recent news of Tiger Woods and, and what's been going on with him, I just, I felt like I wanted to talk about a few things. I think there are a couple of things that have been particularly bothersome or disturbing for me about the situation. And maybe it's just that because Tiger Woods has seemed like a good guy, you know, he was raised by good parents, he grew up in a good family. We just have never heard of anything that um, would lead us to believe that, you know, he wasn't just an all round good guy with integrity and character, that I think it makes it a little bit harder. It makes it a bigger fall when we learn of, of this situation, of what he has done. He just hasn't, I guess, been in the same category as the regular, maybe professional athletes, who maybe a lot of us don't put on quite as high of a expectation as Tiger Woods. So I think to see him succumb to infidelity has been a little bit of a shock to the system for for a lot of us, um, judging by the, the response that even the media has had a little bit. So in addition to that, though, I think one of the things that really bothers me is that there's a lot of kids and a lot of people who really look up to, to Tiger Woods. And the fact that he has given way to um, extramarital affairs, uh, plural, just really bothers me because it normalizes infidelity for all those that now know the story. You can't help but have these kids that hear about this. It just makes it that much easier for them to say, oh, okay, well, I guess maybe that's just what athletes do, or maybe that's just what men do. You know, and think about the damaging message to women as well. It's just like, okay, is it pot? I mean, even though you know there are a lot of men that don't do this, it does make you question and think, okay, is uh, is it possible for men to, to not do this? And women too. I mean, women are often at fault as well. So, so I just think it's concerning what his behavior has done to desensitize and kind of normalize uh, infidelity because he's such a public figure. Uh, you know, one of the other points I kind of wanted to make, too, was this this point that a, a marriage-strengthening advocate colleague of mine, Michelle Weiner-Davis, has kind of made, which is to deep debunk this myth that infidelity only happens to the rich and famous. She spends her time um, working with couples that are on the brink of divorce. She's of the divorce-busting fame, and she works with couples all the time that are in this situation. And her point is that this, is, this isn't just for the rich and famous and those that have people throwing themselves, you know, at them all the time. It, it can happen to anyone. And it's important, I think, for us to realize that it can happen to anyone so that we are proactive in putting up some protections for us. You know, I've talked about a lot of this in my previous Marital Intimacy Show episodes on Affair Proofing Your Marriage. Uh, but here's here's something that she had to say, and I think it's worth worth uh repeating so we can kind of think about this. She says this, I would like to take this opportunity to debunk the myth that the rich and famous have a corner on adulterous behavior. I see many blue collar, no name truck drivers or tradesmen, not to mention carpooling, stay at home moms that slide down the slippery slope of making unfaithful, risk taking, affair seeking choices. In case you didn't know, infidelity 
is an equal opportunity employer. I like that. That's very true. And she goes on to say, so let's not be too quick to blame Tiger's fame, fortune, or sense of entitlement for his poor choices. While it's true that unlike Tiger, most of us don't have adoring, drop-dead gorgeous fans throwing themselves at us, temptations abound nonetheless. We don't have to look further than in the workplace, in our neighborhoods, and even in our places of worship. So that's an important message for all of us. It can happen to anyone if we are not attentive to our marriages and to our spouses and to their needs and to what's going on between us. And if we're not doing the affair-proofing things that we need to be doing, then hopefully this is a wake-up call for us all to say, okay, it's not about Tiger Woods. It's about my marriage. What do I need to be doing? And that's interesting because I found a great article that basically had that title. It was called, Forget Tiger Woods, Is Your Marriage Solid? And that's that's kind of the point I want to make here is let's take advantage of the opportunity to rethink what's going on in our own relationship. What are those things that we need to be doing to affair-proof our marriage or to protect our marriage? And I would encourage you to go back and listen to the episodes number eight through 11 that are the four-part series of Affair Proofing Our Marriage. But I wanted to give you a few reminders here just to make it simple and easy and to make this kind of a quick reminder highlights for you. So what are some of the things that we can be doing to proactively affair proof our marriage? Because if you remember from those shows, it's not enough to just think it won't happen to me. It's also not enough to have beliefs against adultery. Um, it requires action on our part, proactive action more specifically. Okay, so what are some of these things? Um, number one, are you are we communicating openly in our marriages about anything? Can we talk to our spouse about anything? Do we keep any secrets? Because you know what? Secrets will kill you. Do not keep secrets in your marriage. Th- secrets are a poison that will grow and fester and make room for something like infidelity to occur. So do not keep secrets. Number two, acknowledge and discuss attractions to others with your spouse. Now, this may seem like a difficult thing to do, but it's important to have the kind of relationship that you can say, you know, honey, I just, I don't know, I think I'd feel better if I could just tell you something. Hopefully it won't be a big deal to you, but, you know, whatever. I've been kind of thinking about this person, and it's kind of bothering me a little bit. So I just wanted you to know so that it doesn't keep festering. Whatever, and try to make it not a big deal, but those are the kind of things that if you can do those and will do those, they have a protective factor for your marriage. So number three, Work at communicating and meeting each other's needs more effectively. This this goes back to the, the love language concept. Do you know what makes your spouse feel loved? Does your spouse know what makes you feel loved? And are you both doing those things on a regular basis so that these this these voids or this feeling of emptiness doesn't keep building um, between us at times? You really need to keep that connection going and, and being sure that we're doing the best we can to meet each other's needs. Uh, number four, work on your sexual relationship. This needs to be a mutually satisfying part of your marriage. And hey, you know, I've written a, a big book on this. And so hopefully if you can read it and learn it and apply it, it can help you to work on this very important dimension of your relationship. Um, and that's that's a key area as well. Number five, avoid personal relationships with others of the opposite opposite sex. That kind of seems like a no-brainer, but I think there are times where we deceive ourselves into thinking, oh, we're just friends, or, oh, you know, it's just someone I work with at, you know, at the office, no big deal. Um, but it is a big deal, and it's it's the step that takes you down that slippery slope. So just keep things professional. Um, and at the same time of avoiding these personal relationships with members of the opposite sex, it's also important to build friendships with persons of the same sex. They can provide a little bit of a protective factor in your lives as well. Uh, Number six, set mental boundaries. Okay, listen, adultery doesn't just happen out of the blue. 
We can all rest assured of that. It doesn't just happen. It begins in the mind. You have to let it percolate there first before actions get taken that lead you down that path. And then with with that creation of it in your mind as a possibility, then it still takes specific choices or behaviors to move you there. So, I mean, that just kind of brings you to my my last one, which is don't be stupid. Don't friend somebody on Facebook that you still have a crush on. Don't go out alone with members of the opposite sex. Don't return their flirty text messages. Just don't even give it a chance. Think about those little behaviors that move you down that slope. And the thing is, is that you're usually not very rational when, you know, you're getting into a dangerous, dangerous ter- territory, which is why I make a point of teaching the concept of vulnerability plus opportunity spells big trouble. So that's where you go back to some of the things that I've just talked about and say, okay, I've got some vulnerability going on in my marriage. What can I do about it? Am I willing to talk to my spouse and just say, honey, here's what's going on with me. And I just, I thought you ought to know. And I'm a little bit concerned and I think we can do something about it. What do you think? What can we do? Because I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to feel at risk, especially when there are opportunities all around. You don't have to just travel for work. You don't just have to be a rich and famous guy or gal to have opportunities come their way. So if you're feeling vulnerable, uh, do something about it. Uh, work out what you need to do. As you work about what's going on with your relationship and what maybe you need so that you don't have those feelings, be sure to balance that with a renewed effort to meet your spouse's needs a little better. Okay, so, you know, an interesting insight I also kind of came across somewhere in all this Tiger Woods um, saga was something somebody um, made a comment that that I thought was interesting. He talked about how though maybe one of the reasons why this happened with Tiger Woods is that he's he's been treated differently all his life. He's he was, you know, he was on some TV show and he was two years old showing how fabulous of a golfer he was. So he's always been treated kind of as this special, you know, held up on this pedestal kind of person. Well, (laughs) what happens when you get married? Well, you get married and it's the first real, real relationship that you, you really don't have the luxury of hiding who you really are. It's one of the great joys and, and blessings of marriage is that you have an opportunity to be completely and thoroughly known by somebody. But if you're not used to having somebody not think you are perfect and have no flaws and no weaknesses, then that could be a bit of a shock to your system. And I'm thinking, you know what? For Tiger Woods, it may have been a shock to his system where all of a sudden he's got a a wife that's thinking, you know, hey, we both need to do the diapers. We both can do some dishes. We both can maybe get up in the middle of the night with these little kids. Marriage is a partnership. It's not an idol worshiping situation. Certainly we want to be adoring and cherishing of each other, but it's different than what I suspect Tiger Woods is getting out of this, you know, adultery situation, which is why I make such a point as trying to teach this concept that infidelity is a counterfeit of the real thing because it doesn't include the whole package. It doesn't include all of the person. It's just this little piece of you that, yeah, you can keep looking pretty perfect because it's such a little piece of, of who you really are as a whole, as a whole being. Um, the point is, is that marriage allows us to be fully known by another human being. It's a beautiful experience, but it's different than date night. It's different than just going out on the weekends and meeting someone at the, at the nightclub and, them falling in love with this little piece of what they see for a couple hours on the weekend. Marriage requires us to come to grips with who we really are, not who we've pretended to be up until that point. Marriage is a partnership, and it requires collaborative effort. It's the agony, but it's the ecstasy. It goes all together. So I just thought that was kind of interesting concept. You know, the point of all this is that my hope is that we will all take a second look at ourselves and our marriages and look at where we may need to shore it up a bit. 
This is a good opportunity to go back and re-listen to those episodes of on affair proofing your marriage,、uh, episodes eight through eleven, so that none of you end up in the devastating situation in which Tiger and his wife now find themselves. Heaven help them and all of us to protect and nourish our intimate marital relationship. Well. There you have it. Just some thoughts to encourage us all to be more diligent in protecting and strengthening our marriages. This has been episode number eleven: Tiger Woods, Marriage and Infidelity, on the Marital Intimacy Show with Lara M. Brotherson. I do hope it's provided some thought-provoking processes in your own mind and some motivation to make your marriage even better. So thanks for tuning in today. We'll see you soon with more insights and inspiration for strengthening your marriage intimately. Now remember, you can always check in at our website, strengtheningmarriage.com, to learn more. Until then, this is Laura Brotherson with the Marital Intimacy Show. Have a great day and make yours a great marriage.